What's important to you is that this problem has been significantly minimized through the solutions that have been invented for distance vector routing protocols. These include maximum hop count, triggered updates, split horizon, route poisoning, and hold down timers. Now, let's look at how these solutions would fit into our example. When we look at packets traversing the network between Los Angeles and Fort Worth, and we reach a count to infinity, the packet eventually dies out based upon the maximum hop count. The maximum hop count for RIP in our example is 15. This means that the packet can cross 15 routers before it reaches unreachable. 16 in this case is considered unreachable. Therefore, when a packet reaches a destination of 16, it dies because it is just too far away based on our measurement of distance. This is our first solution, but it's obviously not the best one. So we add to that the triggered update, or what's known as the flash update. This is an update which is sent before the timer itself expires. The timer is the interval at which distance vector routing protocols advertise. So let's go back to the example. Here we have this outage on Fort Worth. Fort Worth, when using a flash update, which RIP and IGRP do, will not wait for the 30 second interval before it advertises the outage. Instead, as soon as the outage is detected, it advertises it to Dallas. As soon as Dallas gets it, Dallas passes it on to San Jose. As soon as San Jose gets it, it passes it on to both Los Angeles and Phoenix. It doesn't wait for the normal timer to expire or at the specified or normal interval for it to advertise that the router is no longer available. And that does solve some of the problems. One of the issues that we still have though is crossover during the update. That is, if the flash update happens at the same time as the regular update interval in the opposite direction, we may still face a conflict.